rep. All right. So, first things first, uh, welcome to this one shot. First thing to discuss is... Uh, first thing to discuss is safety tools. Um, there shouldn't be anything too wild or dramatic happening uh, as far as things that would make people uncomfortable. But in case something does, um, if something is kind of weirding you out, uh, feel free to type the word yellow into the chat and we'll kind of steer away from it. If something is making you very uncomfortable, uh, just say red and we'll stop. Um, also, you can just verbally say that out loud if you need to. Um, and that just lets us know that you are doing okay. All right. So, welcome to the world of Tarascon Flats. The Flats is a massive desert. Uh, the stories say that it used to be a sort of lush, uh, verdant area. Uh, full of lots of little kingdoms and towns uh, and was otherwise a very beautiful, wonderful place to live. But a massive, horrible monster uh, was unleashed on the flats and caused great destruction all around. The monster was killed by a hero that the residents of the flats now remember as the Walker. Uh, the walker defeated this giant creature, uh, and the creature's body was actually crushed beneath the earth. What they didn't know is that apparently uh, the creature dying uh, and being crushed beneath their ground actually tainted the ground. It's been poisoned, turning it into this massive arid wasteland. But there's been another effect. This massive arid wasteland is full of this magical material called dust. Dust is incredibly valuable. Uh, it can be used as spell components. It can be used uh, for all kinds of magic items and a million other purposes. Uh, so even though no one would want to live here, uh, lots of folks are trying to set up ways to safely mine dust. You all, uh, for whatever reason, have been hired by the Rosen Investigative Service. Uh, they're sort of like a uh, private uh, investigative slash security force. And they have hired you on behalf of a man named Verdinuckle Holmes, a resident of Walker's Rest, uh, one of the last somewhat safe and stable cities on the edge of the flats. Uh, Mr. Holmes is a rancher and raises prized livestock uh, at Chelonian Mobile Homes Ranch. But recently, uh, some of his livestock have been uh, stolen, despite his extensive security features. So, we're going to pick up with you all uh, in the city of Walker's Rest. So, Walker's Rest is this uh, collection of Mostly small, uh, one to two story buildings, uh, but it's a pretty thriving community. Uh, there's a, a saloon, inn, and restaurant uh, in the middle of town. Uh, there's a hardworking blacksmith. Uh, there's even a small chapel uh, for the walker. So a lot of folks make a pretty decent living here. Uh, so all of you have come into town. Uh, we're going to introduce everyone's characters and tell me what you were doing uh, with your previous evening. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, Joshua. Joshua, what was your character doing? And go ahead and describe them. Hello, I'm Joshua. I'm playing Shagrin Tenpenny. He's a dwarven druid who is in the flats to try to regrow all of the, or grow a new forest here. He absolutely can't stand the fact that there's a giant desert area or wasteland on the edge of where they're living. So he was probably trying to do his best to try to grow anything 
like trees or bushes. And when he realized after a good amount of time and he did his duty that he couldn't grow anything, probably moseyed into a nearby saloon and found himself losing a bit at some games of chance. All right. Uh, so you probably made your way over to Missy's. Uh, Missy's is one of the the best and honestly one of the only saloons in town. It's called the Roundhouse. Uh, and Missy herself is a, a plump, older ASMR woman. Um, the games there are mostly fair, uh, but they are <laughs> uh, brutal players. So, uh, yes, you found yourself taken in a couple of hands. Um, you did also get to see uh, Missy throw out a couple of folks who started brawling. Uh, she is actually a fairly powerful sorcerer. Uh, and a little scary. She keeps a uh, a rifle stave arcane focus behind the bar. Uh, and you watched her force blast a couple of people right out the saloon doors. All right. Uh, moving on. Um, Elias, right? That is correct. All right. What was your character up to? And give us a description. Um... Oh, I'll tell you how to fix it. Uh, turn off if you if you put your mouse over each person's window, uh, you can actually lower their volume individually. Uh, each of you lower the volume for the other person. So you do it for Sophia, and Sophia, you do it for Elias. I think that'll stop the echo, or some of it. Okay. Alternative plan. Uh, how about one of you uh, mute your sound and the other person turn it up so both of you can hear? It wouldn't be D and D online without technical difficulties. While they are getting that figured out, let's go ahead and jump down to Duncan. Uh, Duncan, tell us about your character and what they would have been up to. And you seem to be muted. All right. Uh, Duncan is trying to unmute, so let's go ahead and let Elias take a shot at it. Describe your character and what were you up to? All right. Unmute. All right, so uh, odds are last night my character was probably running away from something. You're still muted. Uh, he's unmuted on our end, as long as you can hear him in the room. Like I said, um, spy character is a wanted fugitive. Um, she was probably running from the law. All right. Uh, and what was your what's your character's name? And and give us a little description. So my character's name. Her name is Eldarian Elisar. Um, she is. Um, Wanted, like I said, she has a bounty of 200,000 gold pieces on her head. 
Um, that's because she's escaped from jail multiple times. And... Um, that's about it. Testing. All right, so you were probably uh, holed up somewhere, kind of staying out of the mix. Um, actually, the uh, if you'd come into town acting a little sketchy, uh, chances are good that the Padre would have reached out. Uh, so you might actually have been offered a place to crash uh, in the crypt underneath the chapel. Mm. Testing, one, two, check. All oh. right. It looks like we have Duncan up and running. So, Duncan, tell us about your character and what they have been doing. Hi, I'm Duncan. I play Lavoy. Um, so, Lavoy has been um, a slave in the area to one of the land barons. And a lot of stuff happened. It's in my bio. Um, anyway, so he's blind. Uh, at the moment, he is in town and... He's looking unthreatening and looks like a bum on the street. Probably begging for money. All right. Uh, yeah, the interior of the flats is very much a lawless, waste, lawless wasteland. Uh, there's a few sort of official companies that are trying to set up mining towns. Uh, but for every official company, there's... Uh, three mining towns that are run by bandits or mad cultists. Uh, it's not a great place to live. Uh, so you might also have encountered the Padre, uh, who's a, a kinder, uh, older man, uh, dark sort of weathered skin uh, and sort of peppered gray black hair. Uh, and you might also have been offered shelter uh, under the chapel. And uh, he would also have probably connected the two of you uh, to the Rosen service uh, and, and set you up with this job. All right, Sophia, uh, bring us in with our last character. What have you been doing? And give us a description. Um, so I play the character of Syl Harris, which I'll just go by Syl. I My character trusts no one. Um, I... I usually am away from people um if i do trust someone it will be because i'm on an adventure with them and i get money for doing it and if somebody threatens my success i kill them uh sounds like you fit right in in the flats <laughs> all right uh so uh you all shargon to offset some of your uh, gambling, uh, losses, um, uh, Eladrian and Sil, uh, and Shargon, uh, to, uh, make a little coin and stay out of, you know, uh, stay out of sight in town. Uh, you all have been hooked up with a job that will take you out into the flats. And the job begins at Shalonian Mobile Homes. Uh, this is one of the ranches outside of town. Um, the city of Walker's Rest is known for these incredible and lucrative ranches. Uh, they take advantage of the sort of ambient magic of the flats uh, to raise really unusual livestock. Um, and actually, as you approach town, you would have seen the, the desert is sort of off in the distance. The area immediately around the flats is actually very... Uh, I would say green if it was grass, uh, but it's all sorts of things. Uh, you see these plants growing up from the ground that are all different colors. Uh, and you see all of these ranches out in the distance. And uh, what they grow is not standard. Um, Shargon, when you were at the roundhouse, uh, you would actually have seen uh, hitched on either end, as far away from each other as possible, uh, outside both a domesticated unicorn and a domesticated nightmare, a giant black stallion with fire uh, coming from its eyes, hooves, and mouth. You would probably have found this very alarming. The locals just took it as part of the day. 
Uh, so it's easy to make your way out to the ranch. Um, it's just outside of town and we will pick up on the road to the ranch. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get our first roll of night out of the way or the morning I'm used to playing at night. Everyone give me a perception check. I only feel the heat of the horse. <laughs> I got a natural 10. Solid. So, yeah. All right. That's where it shows up now. Sorry for the spam. No worries. Uh, so it'll pop up in both the game log on D&D Beyond and also uh, in chat if you have uh, the other thing on. Um, so, Sill, actually, you can turn on dice rolling through D&D Beyond. And uh, if you just click, it'll roll and it'll pop it out to all of us. See, she doesn't understand it. She's really confused about it. All right. Uh, I will take a look at it under the hood. Uh, but in the meantime, unfortunately, a five uh, isn't going to do much for you. Uh, so looks like dice rolling is on. So if you just click the number, uh, like so if you're on the main page, you should see all your skills. There should be a number next to each skill. If you just click the number, it'll roll. Uh but it's all right, because this is not a dangerous skill check. Uh, this is what you all see as you approach. So you're getting a little bit of distance out of town. Um, and most of this area is very, very flat. Um, there's a few sort of like small, uh, almost like mesas out in the distance. Uh, but otherwise, it's very flat. Except for some reason, in this one direction where the ranch is. Uh, and as you approach Chelonian Mobile Homes, uh, you see what look like hills. Uh, and they're varying sizes, but they're very close together in a way that is... It would be strange anywhere, but especially in this very flat terrain. And uh, Shargan and Lavoy, uh, you both notice... Uh, even at, at quite a distance, some of these hills are moving. Do I feel the hills moving? Uh, actually, now that you think about it, you can he feel very gentle, like... Dum. Because I'm blind. <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, yes, you would feel this. Shargan, you would okay. see this. Cool. Um, so yeah, can you can I feel this why low. They're moving yet? What? Can I do I have an idea of why they might be moving? Uh, well, as you draw closer, um, you get a better picture. Each of these hills, uh, there's like fully things like growing on them. Uh, you see like trees, uh, various plants. One has what looks like a small like crop of something growing. Um the largest one actually has like a full, like massive two story house on it. There's like a yard, there's an outhouse, like the whole thing. And as you get closer, you also hear something else. This incredibly loud, uh, this deep rumbling purring. And it just like rolls. There's so much sound. Guys. Guys, the hills are alive, and then the sound of purring. <laughs> but we don't have the rights for that music. Uh, so, <laughs> as you get closer, you realize... What? One might say the hills have eyes. Uh, they do indeed have eyes. You discover each hill has two eyes. Uh, the actual hill, as you look closer, seems to be soil and plant life growing up over a massive shell. 
And poking out of the shell are squat, furry limbs with massive claws uh, and a fuzzy, whiskered face protruding from the front. Uh, make Everybody make uh, arcana or nature checks. Mm, nature. Seven. All right. Uh, this kind of makes sense. Uh, Lavoie, you've you've sort of been in the area of the flats long enough that you've heard of these before. And Shargan, this would have come up in your research trying to figure out how to restore some of the natural life here. Uh, what Holmes seems to have here are domesticated island turtles. Uh, a very, very small variety. Uh, these are usually found out in the deep water, uh, and they are massive turtles that actually grow uh, by absorbing some of the ambient energy from things that live on their backs. Uh, these seem to have been domesticated and uh, bred to survive the sort of harsh desert environment. Uh, so as you get closer, um, you hear, uh, oh, hello down there. I, I, I look up towards the source. Hello? Uh, up on top of one of the hills, uh, there seems to be a small figure uh, holding like some kind of like spyglass and looking down at you. Um, as you're, as after he, he yells this greeting, uh, you see him uh, just jump from the top of this massive turtle. Uh, it's like probably a hundred feet up in the air. Um and then he sort of clicks his heels in midair and you watch him gently float down in front of you. Uh, and you catch your first glimpse of Vertinuckle Holmes. Um, you can't tell if he's a short human or a gnome. Uh, but there is a lot of frizzy gray hair in like every direction. Huge uh, sort of... Uh, Almost like uh, like fishbowl lens glasses, <laughs> um, and he he comes up. He's probably eye level with with Shargan, um, <laughs> uh, but he's at the waist of everyone else. Um, well, uh, have you all uh, come here to uh, recover my my cattle? Uh. Uh, I suppose so. Kind of forced into this, but I need to make a living somehow. <laughs> Don't we all? Well, let me show you over to the hatchery. Uh, and he leads you all sort of around the circumference of the ranch uh, to a... There's like a nice little enclosure back here that's been set off even apart from the rest of the ranch. Um... And as you walk along the fence line, there's like a hum. There is a some kind of powerful defensive enchantment that is marked by this fence line. So you make your way over to this other enclosure, uh, and you can see uh, eggs that are the size of a person. Truly massive. They have kind of like a leathery surface to them. Uh, and you can see uh, what looks like the remains of about six additional eggs. Uh, around the the base of each egg, it looks like someone has placed a a circle of of small stones, each about the size of a fist, and they seem to have glyphs and runes written on them um, that are spellcasters would recognize as uh, glyphs of like gentle warming. Uh, this is like an incubator. 
Uh, and he points and says, Yes, see, there should be a clean dozen. Cattle always lay in a dozen. But I only have six. And the reason I only have six is that someone has stolen my cattle. And that just won't do. Can I go see your cattle? Uh, so, <clears throat> as you say this, you realize there's something strange about the way he keeps saying cattle. Um, and if we could get a glimpse inside your all's heads, imagine the word cattle popping up in giant letters. And the word breaks apart. What has been stolen is the hatchling version of these giant island turtles. Uh, and as you realize this, you can look around and see, you see them in all sort of stages of life. Uh, the sort of central ranch building seems to be on a almost fully grown uh, cattle. Um, but you also see like adolescent phases where they just have like a couple of trees. Uh, you see like a very young phase where it's like just a patch of grass. Um, but they're sort of all it. off in the distance uh, in varying phases. Can I go touch the turtles? Sure. Uh, make an animal handling check. Um, you, uh, it's easy to find them. Uh, they, to you, they make a lot of noise, uh, for everyone else. It's not too strong, but you can feel it like vibrating through the ground. Uh, you put a hand up on one of them and you feel, uh, it, it's sort of like turns ponderously slowly to look at you. Uh, and then it kind of like nuzzles against you just slightly but it's a massive creature so as it nuzzles oh. it, it like shoves you back just a little bit uh, and you hear that deep bass rumbling purr can I investigate the turtle too just so I have a clear like image in my mind yeah I won't even make you roll for it there's a ton of them oh, Okay, and they're pretty chill they'll let you just sort of walk up and investigate them cool Need I need details, so <laughs> touching <laughs> turtles. Yeah, it's uh the the shell itself, um it, it's almost like it naturally just accumulates this sort of dust and dirt and soil uh that blows through the air. Uh you do see some of the smaller uh cattle occasionally will like roll over on their backs and very slowly like it's almost like they're scratching their backs on the soil. But when they flip back over, their shell has accumulated another thick layer of dirt. But underneath that, they're a little fuzzy. So, um, Mr. Holmes. Yes? Do, do you know of anyone that would want to steal... Your island tortoises? Uh, well, you can see they're they're quite valuable. Uh, I don't know where else you'd find such fine shelter out here in the flats. Uh, yes, they're they're very valuable. Uh, of course, they're they're quite magical. Uh, although we'd never, uh, no one would ever dare use a a Holmes uh, cattle for components. Uh, but of course, they're valuable. Do you see this? Uh, this fence line is supposed to protect them. And I don't know how Six could have gone missing like this. C 
can I study the ground to see if there has been any like odd shifting? Yeah, uh, I'll go ahead and have uh, all of you make an investigation check. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm going to totally suck in combat. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, awesome. Sill has found the roller. It is popping up correctly now. Or so I thought. It's showing up in D&D Beyond, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not. It's like it hung on rolling. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, very good. Uh, so, Shargan, I think you're a little distracted uh, just by all of these creatures and all the plant life. Um, the rest of you, uh, as you go and sort of investigate the enclosure and sort of the fence line, uh, yeah, you called it. You go over there, and there is definitely a uh, disturbed patch of soil where it looks like something has uh, shifted and mingled sand and dirt in a huge patch. Guys, come look at this. I, okay. I try to point towards, or yeah, point towards the dirt, or beckon beckon them over towards the dirt. So, very specifically, you all can see that it looks like the. Uh, the dirt and grass that was growing here uh, has been sort of shifted and folded and mingled with sand from further out. Uh, I'm going to have y'all make a perception check. Oh, not perception. Twenty. <laughs> all right. Uh, so several of you all uh, spot this. Uh, there is a patch of similarly disturbed earth uh, about. 20 or 30 feet the other side of the fence line. Uh, I asked Mr. Holmes, when did this disturbance in the ground happen? He, uh, he looks really closely and you see him adjust the, the lenses on his glasses. Oh, huh. I hadn't noticed that before. Hmm. <clears throat> I think we found the first step in where your culprit, or how the culprit has taken you, cattle. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Le Boy? Uh, mole people. <laughs> Mole people. I was thinking um, large creatures. Well, possibly, you know, dire moles. Giants? Giants. That'd work too. Do I know if there's like giants in the flats or in the surrounding areas of the flats? <laughs> Uh, there's pretty much everything out there. Um, That's what it is. There's not just sort of the standard D and D monsters, uh, but scary uh, desert magic versions, uh, and just things that 
folks outside have never even heard of before. Mm. It's probably the latter. <laughs> I'm going to uh, take some of the the grass and dirt um, and put it in a cloth and take it with me. All right. Um. Aliens. <laughs> did, did I miss the shape of the hole? Was it shaped in a specific way? Uh, so it looks like a large circular patch. Uh, it's not like a perfect circle, though. Footprints. Ten ten. Are, are there other... Um, can we see if there are other like patches like that in like the vicinity? Uh, with that perception check, a couple of you saw one that is out on the other side of the fence side, out past the defensive magic. Can I feel how tall the defensive magic goes? Uh... Everyone make an arcana check. Oh, yeah, I'm going to feel this one. Arcana. All right, so plus two. Okay. 18. All right. So, uh, <laughs> this seems appropriate. Uh, so, uh, Eldarian, uh, you have, for one reason or another, uh, had to enter places with similar barriers without an invitation before. <laughs> um, and so you're able to kind of eyeball this and get a feel. Uh, it's a little hard to see just looking because it's an invisible barrier, but there's slight distortions in the air as like uh, wind and dust and sand tries to sort of blow through the barrier. And you can see that it goes up in a full dome up and above the ranch. Um, so it's like the chinks in the armor from Hunger Games. Yes. So you can kind of see the the arc up and above. Um, <laughs> I'll say, Lavoy, you can actually feel there is a a slight tactile sensation from where the uh, this this defensive space meets the ground underneath. Um, you get the impression that it is a full sphere, but for some reason, it seems to weaken at a point down about 30 feet underground ahead of you. Interesting. Told you. <clears throat> Mole people. <laughs> uh, so there's... Uh, Mr. Holmes, do you realize there's a weak point in your barrier? There's a, a what? This is the finest barrier money can buy. Uh, well, at the pinnacle point where the the forces come together, uh, it, it feels like there's kind of a hole. So I'm assuming that the bottom one also reflects the top. So technically you have two holes. <sighs> well, I will have to have a word with the installation team. In the meantime, do you think you can go and, and find whatever did this? Yes. Uh, poss possibly. Um, maybe. Yes. Here, take this. Uh, he hands you a ward stone uh, that will let you temporarily open part of the shield and go through. Sweet. 
Uh, is there only just one hole on the other side inside the barrier? It seems very targeted. There is just this one spot. One spot. Okay. <clears throat> so if there's only... I, I go inside the barrier. Is, does anyone want to join me? <clears throat> I'll go. Why not? So with this okay. in hand, yeah. uh, you all are able to open a tiny gap and pass out of the barrier and out towards yeah. the flats. So as you all make your way out here with the checks you had before, uh, you can definitely see that there are tracks uh, heading away from, or both to and away from this this disturbed patch of earth on the other side of the fence. So, Shargan, with your mole theory, there would have to be multiple holes within the enclosure. Now, I don't feel holes within the enclosure. I only feel like someone stepped in and someone stepped out. Almost like they came in and grabbed something and walked away. It was less a theory and more of a notion. Uh, I'm going to have all of you make a nature check as you're looking at, or survival if you're better. Nature or survival. I'll take the, the, the survival because that was my last roll. All right. Uh, so as you're looking at it, it's a little hard to figure out what's happening with these prints. Um, but when uh, Eldarian kind of gets his gets their their face down to it, um, you can see what looks like prints of a smaller version of the giant cattle. You also part of what makes this strange to read is. It's almost like someone has swept from side to side across these prints. And it takes you a second to put it together, but it is very specifically a serpentine pattern of motion. Serpentine, serpentine. <laughs> I can't do anything with that because I don't know. <laughs> Do, do you mention that to the rest of us? I'm going to see and look at... I'm going to try and see where they're going. All right. Uh, it definitely seems to lead further out away from Walker's Rest and out into the desert. So, is the serpentine pattern blatant that we all see it uh i think uh eldarian are you going to point it out to everyone else uh yeah i'm gonna say you're muted bud <laughs> me oh i'm hearing him um i'm gonna point out the tracks and say uh i think they're headed towards the desert oh, okay Druid. oh wait I don't know if you're a druid. My apologies. <laughs> okay, never mind. No, it's pretty obvious. And I didn't make it quiet around town if you've been in town for more than, like, probably a day. Oh, okay, cool. Sweet. Then I, I would hear the bustle begging. <clears throat> uh, druid, uh, do you know anything about large serpentine-like creatures? Uh, go ahead, Shargan, make a nature check with advantage. Nature check with advantage. All right. Uh, with that, uh, of course, you can think of a ton of snake species off the top of your head. Um, ones you know for sure out here that you've researched. Uh, also ones that like you just suspect would be in a sort of dry environment like this. Um, 
but the size of this strikes you as odd. Um, not just like, the size, but the nature of it. Like, well, of course, you have giant garter snakes, you have giant copperheads, you have giant cobras, <laughs> you have giant razorbacks. How about giant nope ropes? Danger noodles. How do you know the druid speak? <laughs> So uh, you definitely notice uh, while the, sh the pattern itself doesn't suggest much in particular, the fact that something brought the cattle back with it immediately knocks out all, almost all kinds of wild snakes. Uh, just about anything, it's going to eat what it can and then leave. Uh, it wouldn't just be like taking it back for a snack. You do know. I do that. <laughs> yeah, this this thing got a, a to go lunch. Um, you've heard rumors that, in addition to all of the other various strangeness out in the desert, that there are groups of snake humanoids called Yuan T living out in the flats. They are much smarter and much scarier than just a random large snake. And I relay said information to the party about the Yan T. Never heard of it. Um, that probably means you're still alive. Fair enough. I just hide behind someone because I care nothing about the snake thing. Well, finding them will make you some money, though. So, if you are if you are money motivated, then uh, this will will get your attention. And specifically. Uh, the last thing that was noted on this job that you all took is that the more of these creatures you can recover alive, the more money you make each. So that's an extra 50 gold to each of you for every single one that you bring back alive. And you know, there's six missing. So that's 300 gold. And that amount is counting down the longer you take. So let's, uh, Get going and wait, 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 wait. Um, I'm gonna try and persuade him to give us more. All right. Uh, what kind of argument are you making? Um, I say that because these are so very valuable, that we should at least get 100 per one that we bring back. And time limit should be extended. Well, there's no particular time limit. It's just that you assume that something's going to happen to them if you take too long. So they have to come back alive and not dead. Uh, so go ahead and roll a persuasion check. Persuasioning. Twenty-three. Jeez. Okay. Um, he kind of gives you a, a shrewd look. Huh. I'll tell you what. If you bring back at least four of the six that are missing, the smith in town owes me a favor. You bring back at least four of the six, and I'll sponsor you for a weapon of your choice down at the smith's. And he holds out a tiny hand. Deal? I shake it. All right. Now, get, get. So I guess that's our cue to leave. I keep the leaf follow Eldaria and LSR. All right. Uh, so let's put someone up in front. Who has the best survival? 
I got a plus uh, zero. Plus three. All right. Seems like it'll probably be the druid. Uh, so, uh, Shargan, roll survival with advantage to track the tracks. That would be hard for me to track those. <laughs> <coughs> all right. Uh, so, with that exceptional roll, uh, you all are pretty easily able to follow the tracks. Uh, they do sort of wander for a bit. Um, and so, you know, you all, uh, have been, been outfitted with some of the basics that you need. You have plenty of water. You have sort of desert appropriate gear. Um, all right. Um, and so you all sort of begin to make your way out into the flats. Uh, Shargan is keeping a close eye and, uh, never loses the, pr never loses the trail. Um, and eventually you all find your way to a, the, the elevation suddenly sort of drops out and you're starting to see less sand and more rock. Um, it's almost like maybe this was a ravine uh, or there was a, like a dry riverbed here. Um, I'm going to switch maps. So you all should be now seeing like a, a canyon type space, right? Yep. All right. I'm going to have you all drop your tokens on the south end of the map. I don't have a journal with a token controller. <clears throat> oh. Hmm. Why is that? Oh, because it's not assigned to you. That'll do it. I don't think I have one either. Okay, there's that. Uh, you should be seeing one. Uh, so I've added Shargan. Uh, oops, I called you Eladrian instead of Eldarian. Uh, so on the top right side of the screen, uh, you should see, I think it's five symbols if you're a player. Uh, it's like a text box, uh, like pictures, and then uh, it almost looks like a newspaper for some reason. Uh, but it's like the third icon from the left. And if you click there, you should see characters, and then your character should be underneath. And you can drag and drop it onto the screen. All right. Uh, well, Sophia gets a token dropped. Um, the tracks get a little harder to read here uh, because the ground underneath is actually harder. Uh, the sand is broken up with, with actual stone, uh, which is not leaving prints. Um, but you still get the impression that they're moving generally down through this passage. Um, everybody make a perception check. I'm still staring at the ground looking for prints. Yep. All right. Uh, so, uh, Eldarian and uh, Sill both notice there seems to be something not so much moving as just like something is sort of sticking out on the road up ahead. Hmm. Um, That's why I don't see it. 
fine. Uh, uh, can I walk to the outer wall? And so I can have something to feel against. <coughs> uh, yeah, you can easily uh, sort of make your way through here. All right, uh, so what do you all want to do? Uh, I'm feeling the sidewalls of the cannon, the canyon. Um, feel anything that might be above us. Uh, you're not getting the vibrations of anything sort of up above. Um, Elias and Sill are definitely... There's definitely something unnatural in the road ahead. Um, I investigate the tracks further. I continue to walk up the, the side wall. All right. Uh, Sil, see if you can move that token I just dropped. Awesome. All right. Uh, so... So you're able to kind of keep moving ahead. Um... Whatever it is doesn't seem to be moving. You are going to continue to advance? Yes. Why not? All right. Uh, right about there, uh, Shargan, you take a step forward. Uh, and as you do, uh, Lavoy, you hear... And Guys, get ready. The sand up ahead of you uh, shifts, revealing serpentine creatures uh, that shake the sand away and then turn threatening fixed gazes on you all. I'm going to have everybody roll for initiative. Ah, oh, boy. Nine. Do I get advantage? <laughs> so Lavoy got nineteen Shargan. Oh, those are good. The nine and seven. All right. At the top of the order is Shargan. So what you see ahead of you uh, are... Oh, whoops. Should be two of those fellas. Uh, you see two large, what looks like humanoid serpents... They have, like, long serpentine tails, uh, but their upper bodies are this strange amalgamation of, like, a spiny cobra uh, and a long-limbed humanoid. Uh, on the ground, you also see uh, a large uh, skeletal... I mean, you can kind of eyeball this. This seems like a constrictor at this size. And there are also several brightly colored smaller snakes slithering through. What do you want to do? Let's see. Um, am I aware of roughly the what my um, fellow teammates look like as far as like what they're wielding for equipment? Uh, I think you'd have an idea. Uh, Lavoy has been carrying his staff or his spear. Uh, okay. Sophia seems to be a caster. Uh, Eldarian, are you more of a knife wielder? Uh, I've got a bow slung over my shoulder. Okay. I also have the dagger with me. All 
All right, so we'll start by let's start by keeping these guys away from us. So we will cast Entangle. All right, where are you going to center that? I'm double checking how large it is. Uh, usually it's 10 foot range and it's a. Uh, okay, it's got a foot range, okay. So we will target it, right? So it's a 20 foot square. We'll be putting it. That is not a 20 foot square starting from point in range. We're basically going to block off the middle part. So that's 10 foot. That's 20 foot. We'll be placing it right about... <coughs> you like the wall, so we'll put it... Ooh, we'll drop it right here to try to capture these guys. Right there. Let's try to bottleneck them. Alright. So the two who are there are going to make strength saving throws. I think it's supposed to be bigger than that, actually. But whatever. I think that, isn't it, uh, let's see. A 20-foot square. Yeah, that's 20-foot square. Yeah. Okay, and that's a DC 14 strength saving throw. Big boy gets a two on the die. So nice. that's not happening. <laughs> Little one gets a 14 on the die, but has a minus four. So, they so they're are, both restrained. Yep, they are entangled, restrained. Uh, so for just a minute, your druidic magic overpowers this corrosive effect of the flats environment. And all of these green grasping plants burst up through the ground. Uh, there's like mingled in with like cacti and cactus flowers and they swirl up and wrap around these creatures i smile because it feels good <laughs> uh do we do anything with your bonus action um no we'll keep the bonus action for now all right lavoy you are up forward. i'm gonna move over there and oh. And um, my my uh, spear is held two-handed. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll do. I can fury of blows with the the spear, correct? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do. So, oh, actually, I'm I'm just it's a small guy. I'm gonna just attack him. Oh, did I not drop that in your? Doo -doo -doo. Uh, go ahead and roll it. I'm dropping an extra thing in your inventory. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> oh no! All right, I knew it. I knew it. It's all right. It's all right. You got your. You got the bonus actions. Uh, and if you hit refresh, uh, I dropped an item in um, that I made for you. Oh, cool! Got a full blue item. Yep, Shargan, you've got one too. Uh, Eldarian, uh, go ahead and throw yourself in a uh, short bow plus one. Um, okay. Uh, what? You said a plus one short bow? Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Alright, so if you spend your key, you can make your two extra attacks. Okay. Well, the, does the, the fumble, like, keep me away from. Me? Oh, no. Okay. Alright. Yeah. 
Where's my attack? There it is. Oh, wrong one. My apologies. Yeah, no, that's... No, it's not the right one. Okay. That's the right... This one's the right one. <laughs> so I have one more? Uh, so you... Uh, because uh, the plus... The, the second spear one wasn't the right spear? It's okay. We'll, we'll take it. Because you would okay. just add one. So that oh, you've okay. got... Out of three, you get one hit. That is yes. very impressive, though. Two natural ones in your first round of combat. <laughs> I knew it. I'm like, I'm rolling so high for these. You were steps. killing the non-combat rolls. <laughs> yeah, I'm so real play. <laughs> Woo! Uh, can I get 11, please? <laughs> uh, yep, you... Jeez. Uh, and you only <laughs> needed two. Uh, so, <laughs> you all watch. Uh, it, it takes Lavoy a second to kind of get back in gear um the the first blow seems a little uh little off uh but then the second one suddenly just whips this blade across this snake and the snake is just instantly shredded so Oof. it's gone i'm picturing that like um it is a snake fighter and then just does all these dance moves and suddenly just pokes the snake and it dies <laughs> Wow. All right. Uh, so that was action and bonus action and movement. Yay. All right. Uh, now the humanoid creatures are going to go. Um, <laughs> let's see. They are smart enough. They are not going to try and make it across the entangle. Instead, uh, you see them both pull out short bows. Uh, first one only nets a 10. Second one gets a 21 to hit versus Lavoy. That, that hits. All right, that is seven piercing and eight poison damage. Uh, you only oh. realize after the, the arrow impacts, uh, you instantly feel sort of sick oh. and sluggish. Okay. And I can't deflect missile attack? Uh, yeah, you can. Go ahead and give it okay. a shot. All right. Fifteen. So, actually, that reduces it to zero. Oh. <laughs> deflect missiles is really good. Yes. <laughs> Clearly. All right. One snake shredded. Uh, one arrow ripped out of the air. Uh, it's the big snake's turn. Uh, it is going to make a strength check to try and break free. That one. It's not going anywhere. The smaller snakes are going to try and slither forward to attack. One of them gets to try to break free. Yep. I bet it doesn't. <laughs> Does a one do it? No. And actually, I guess the others are going to dash. So they won't get to attack, but they can at least pressure the boy. All right, Eldarian, you are up. Um... I'm going to use this wonderful turn to get as much space between me and these monsters as I can. Just straight up run away. Uh, uh, so here we go. We... Well, right. The regular range on your short bow is going to be 80. So if you go much further, you're going to get disadvantage. But where you're at, you could still hit any of the smaller snakes. And if you were 
10 forward, you could hit the big snake. I'm going to try and hit the small snake that's uh, right in front of the boy. All right. Go for it. All right. So let's see. I'm going to use my plus three short bow. I rolled a natural one. And so that's four. So no hit. Nope. Not going to do it. Nope. All right. That brings us to Syl's turn. Uh, Syl, you might have to refresh. I went ahead and dropped some spells in your spell book. That way you're ready to go. Right now, I'm going to just travel over and help the boy. No, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to travel over. All right, what are you wanting to do? Um, I will use my dagger and try to stab one of the snakes. Um, let's go with the one right in front of the boy. All right, I went ahead and dropped a dagger in your inventory. So roll a d20 and add five. Nine. So it's a 14 total. That will hit. Uh, and you're pretty good with a dagger for a wizardy type. And you kill it. My All character right. has killed many things with the dagger. <laughs> All right, we are back to the top with Shargan. Okay, so let's see. We are going to move here. And we are going to attempt to thorn whip that little one. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right, so it's a spell attack roll. That will definitely hit. Uh, so this this thorn, uh, you just sort of whip it up out of the ground, uh, and it lashes out, wraps around this snake, and just pulls it apart. Uh, oh, okay, that's how I'm that startled. works. All right, you all have cleared the space around Lavoy. Uh, bonus action. Anything you want to do, Shargan? Uh, no, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go now I'm going to move a little bit here and kind of like yeah I'm going to go prone alright that will make you a harder target for the ranged attackers alright so in that case uh, Lavoy you are next um Yeah. Let's uh, let's uh pull this sucker. Uh, I'm gonna throw my spear. With that will uh which one are you throwing at uh i'm gonna throw it at the 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 big guy uh that'll hit okay and i am utilizing the the charge um yeah so <clears throat> so it pulls 15 feet Towards me? Yeah, towards me. All right. And double checking the language. Restraint. Uh, go ahead and roll again just to see if you crit. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
You are just all uh, all or nothing today. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you're also going to roll the extra damage from the spear twice. So this is going to be a lot. Uh, that's going to be, uh, three, four D six. No, sorry. Yeah. Four D six plus three. Okay. Uh, is there a simple, okay. One. Can I redo that, or do I have to just continually? Click uh, this? In the bottom left, there's a roller, and you can oh, just. Oh, hey, click there it. we go. Yeah. Okay, two, three more. Okay, and then the actual damage of the spear. All right, so you deal 14 points of damage. Uh, isn't... No, sorry, 46 was including the base damage. Oh, okay. All right, so you all see... Uh, Lavoie's spear has these spiraling metallic patterns on it. And uh, as he pulls it back, one of the patterns starts to smoke and literally burns all the way down and just evaporates into the air. And when he throws it, there's like a shock wave that comes off of it. Uh, and it hits this creature, and a huge chunk of it just shatters. And then you're pulling it, right? Yeah, I'm pulling it. Uh, and then these waves uh, coming off of the spear uh, suddenly reverse direction. And as it pulls back to his hand, it drags the creature 15 feet towards him. That is so cool. <laughs> Uh, oh, actually, it doesn't just pull it towards you. It pulls its dead body towards you. It fully shatters <laughs> and dies. It's only got 13 health. <laughs> Is dead. I am blind man. Hear me roar. <laughs> All right. Uh, the two in the back are not happy with that. Uh, they, they hiss something in a language you all don't understand. Um and both of them are going to uh, train their bows on Lavoy. Eh, no, they're not that dumb. They just watch that super not work. Oh, I get a plus two to my AC for the next round. Uh, they would like to shoot at Lavoy, but they've seen that that doesn't work. Uh, so they're going to shoot uh, at Sill instead. That is nice. a 19 and a 21. Let's see. That would only get you to 18. All right. They are going to roll damage. The first one deals 11 points of damage. Uh, so if if the arrow was coming through my threat range, does that mean I can still deflect it? A good question. Let's see. Because it does not say. Uh, it's only when you are hit. Okay. Only when I'm hit. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Uh, so first one does 11. The second one does 11. So that's 22 points total. Ouch. Ooh. Uh, so Sil, that is going to knock you out. I'm not happy about this. Uh, so Sil, you dropped to zero hit points and you were going to go unconscious. That brings us to the... Man, they all go in a row. Uh, the remaining small snakes... Uh, small snake, singular. <laughs> it is going to try and make another strength saving throw. Oh, this might actually do it. 
Uh, let's look uh, at Entangle. Entangle is going to make a strength check against your DC. It actually breaks free. This poor tiny little snake triumphantly bursts free. It's I like to think he tore up the entangle with the pole. Uh, so it gets out, but it uses its action to do it. So you're getting a lot of mileage out of this entangle. Uh, Eldarian, it is your turn. Um, I suppose I should probably move. Help you guys out. And... I'm going to shoot at the snake that's uh, medium distance away from me. All right. 19 plus 3, 22. That'll hit. And then it's 1d6 piercing damage. You literally can't not kill it. <laughs> Your arrow yeah. just dusts it. Well, I rolled a six, so. All right. Uh, so, Sil, we're going to need you to give us a death saving throw. This is just a flat D20, and you want a 10 or above. Here. You have to make a death saving throw. Fifteen. That is a success. All right. Uh, that brings us back to the top with Shargan. Well, we're going to first off, we're going to healing word the down party member. So we're going to go find her. So, um, uh, Sif, Sif. Uh, heal five. And uh, what does your healing word look like? Probably like little motes of light. <laughs> Think of it. It looks like pollen. All it right. Kind of looks like pollen around you. <laughs> and it sort of, it's less of a healing word and more of, more of a healing sneeze. <laughs> You sneeze your way back to consciousness. Yep. You're like unconscious and you sneeze and wake up suddenly. Um, I will stand up and kind of make my way. Actually, I'll stay prone and move like just up a little bit. There we go. So like it's sort of, it's not like I'm flat on the ground, but I'm kind of like prone behind rocks and stuff. You're like first person shooter crouching. Yeah. I, I'm essentially like, I guess I'll get up and take the dodge action. I can do that and it's the same su function. It's a little less like lame. Yeah. So you, uh, you sort of take cover after you heal. Yeah. To try to like not get shot in the face. All right. Uh, then that brings us to Lavoy. All right, let's kill these suckers. Uh, I'm moving up to them, um, and I'm just going to f fury at them because uh, they downed one of my friends, so f or comrades, not a friend, comrade.
Uh, let's see. Uh, all three of those will hit. Yay. Okay. It's a big unarmored snake person. All right, uh, so you all uh, see Lavoy uh, engage in this uh, close combat with this snake creature. The creature drops its bow and pulls out a scimitar and is desperately trying to deflect. But it's almost like Lavoy's spear, like there's other things pushing and pulling at it other than just his hands. It suddenly like turns at weird angles and flips around and the, the poor creature just can't get around it. Uh, so rapid fire, three blows just pierce into this creature, shattering through scale and just spraying serpentine blood everywhere. It is wow. very hurt immediately. It's not dead yet. It is not dead. It's a it's a tough creature. It took Twenty what twenty five points of damage. I mean, all the little snakes had two HP. They yeah, were they fair. were pretty much fluff. This is the okay. real fight. Uh, so, I did make a successful attack, so I get a plus two to my AC. All right. Uh, the creature is not happy. Uh, it's sort of clutching its side, and it's sort of breathing heavily. And then suddenly it inhales really deeply and blows out this poisonous cloud over you. Uh, make a constitution saving throw. Uh, you succeed. Uh, you sort of... Not only do you not inhale it, but as it gets close, something sort of pushes it gently away from you, and it's like it splits and, and dissipates into the air. The other creature is going to come up behind you with its scimitar, and it is also going to try... Uh, it's going to try and attack. So it's going to roll with advantage from flanking, but you do have that bonus. So it gets a 17 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Oh, just barely. All right, and it is going to... <laughs> it deals six points of damage. That drops us all the way back down. All of our little snaky boys are dead. It is Eldarian's turn. Um, uh, uh, so clarification... Um, the one in front of me is the one I've been engaged with, and the one behind me is... Yes, and I'll actually go okay. ahead and mark. It is very hurt. I'm going to continue advancing. <coughs> so I... yeah. um, then I'm going to attempt to... My character sheet, though. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. Okay. Then I'm so. going to attempt to use my short bow to shoot. I uh, rolled a 17 plus 1 is uh, 18, so 18 to hit. 18 will hit. And uh, it is engaged in combat with one of your allies, so you do get sneak attack. And I rolled a 3 plus 1, so 4. Uh, so go ahead and roll your sneak attack over top of that. Um, Let's see. At your level, sneak attack is going to deal 2d6 extra damage. Yeah. Alright, so... Uh, six in total. That's nine. All right, nine damage. It is right on the brink of death. Uh, and that brings us to Sill's turn. Uh, Sill, you do have cantrips that you can use every turn, uh, in addition to spells that you can burn off to deal uh, more damage or do more interesting effects. Yeah. 
For now, I think I'm just gonna move. For now, I think I'm gonna stick with my dagger and try to kill one of the snakes. With the difficult terrain from Entangle, you're actually not going to be able to get over there because that's going to be 45 feet plus the difficult terrain. Okay. If you'd like, we can flavor your cantrips to include your dagger. So instead of shooting a distinct fiery bolt, you could light your dagger on fire and throw it. That sounds cool. All right. Uh, so go ahead and roll D20 plus five. Thirteen. All right. Uh, Thirteen will definitely hit. So roll one d ten. Nine. Jeez. All right. Uh, so you, you all see Syl uh, take her trusty dagger um, and whisper a few words. And the dagger just fully lights on fire. And as she flings it through the air, it flies impossibly far and just like right into the head of this very injured snake creature. And the whole thing catches on fire and it is fully dead. So there is one snake left standing. <clears throat> that one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that brings us back to the top with Shargan. Well, it's probably hindering more than helping at this point, so I'm going to cancel my difficulty round. Um, because there's nothing else to do with that. Then we'll see how far we are. Make sure I'm within range. We are, and we will just hit it with a thorn whip again. Oh, whoop. That will hit. For whole one damage. It's not the most damaging of cantrips. All right. So did you say you do or don't want to pull it? I do have to pull it. All right. Pull it. Does this move mean it moves out of my threat range? It's a it, forced pull, so it doesn't yeah. um, provoke. Anytime it uses Dang an it. action uh, to move itself, uh, you would get an attack of opportunity. So some spells do that, but this one doesn't. Okay. Bummer. That would have been fun. This is more pull things out of cover fun. Yep. All right. Uh, in that case, it is Lavoie's turn. Uh, so I can take a five foot step, correct? Or no, that's 10 feet, isn't it? Uh, it it's, that's an old rule. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I'm going to use um, a Fury of Blows and one of the charges of the weapon. Um, yeah. So we're going to have fun with this. Um, so. All of those. Oh, okay. Never mind. That doesn't work. Okay. Hit. Hit. Miss. Okay, two hit. Um, so two of those guys plus what six? Yeah, plus six. And uh, the two d six. And then. Uh, DC 12 saving throw. All right. Okay. Yeah. So 11, 17, 25. It's going to make a strength save. Uh, 
fails. It fails. It is going to go prone. <clears throat> I used to be a snake boy like you until I took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> All right. Uh, so once again, you all see this spear just like whip through the air um, and just crack, crack, crack. Uh, and this creature falls uh, not quite to its knees because it doesn't have knees, but it falls to a lower portion of its torso. Uh, and it is now prone. So melee attacks will have advantage. Range attacks will have disadvantage. And it's going to take movement to get back up. Oh. Which it will do on its turn. And I get, yeah, I have a plus two again because successful attack. Uh, it is going to try and bail. It is real hurt. It's going to take a disengage action and start running. Oh, if it's disengaging, I can't yep. hit it. It makes it to there, but it's back on its feet. Can I throw at it? <laughs> Uh, you can throw at it on, on your turn. Dang it. Uh, Eldarian, you are up. Um, so, let's see. Uh, how, oh, far is, I do. how far is that serpent away from me? Uh, let's grab our handy-dandy measuring tool. 75 feet, so that is within range of your bow. Uh, I'm going to try and shoot him. Can I say something as a free action? Sure. Wait, maybe we can uh, hold him hostage and get information. I aim for his foot. <laughs> no feet, snake person. Yeah. Then I aim for the lower half of his body. All right. Uh, so I rolled a 16 plus 3. 19? 19 will hit. Uh, so then roll a three for damage all right uh what are you what are you adding to that uh oh so four then i'm adding one so four all right uh it is very very hurt but it is not quite dead Ooh, okay. uh, but it is sill's turn sill what do you want to do You're on mute, by the way. How far can I go? Uh, uh, you can move 30. Uh, if you want to throw your fiery dagger again, that's 120 feet. Let's do that again. All right. D20 plus 5. 16. That will indeed hit. Then 1d10 for the damage. Nine. Jeez, it has one HP left. <laughs> mm. All right, that brings us to Shargill. Did you want to keep it alive or do we just want to kill it? I wanted to interrogate it. I'm pretty sure I can grapple it at one health. I think as written, you can deal non-lethal damage with me any melee attack. Yeah, I can't get up to close to it, though. Uh, yes, I but can. But I think that your... Um, oh, you're right. I think that is a ranged melee attack. Attempt. Yeah. Melee spell attack. Yeah, we're going to do that because that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely works. Well, That's weirdly anyway. phrased. It's going to miss anyway. Well, it's only got one HP, and we've got more encounters. So we're just going to say that this hits. Uh, so yeah. your your thorn whip catches the very tip of its tail. And it lets out a horrible beep. Uh, it catches the very tip of its tail. You pull... And the back end of it goes up. The front end of it tries to go forward, 
and the net result is that it smacks its head onto the rock below and goes unconscious. We now have a snake person. All right. Uh, to keep us on our time frame, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick uh, bathroom slash stand up break. Um, and we'll come back in about five minutes. And we'll go ahead and say that you all can take a short rest. Sweet. Sounds good. Did I turn off my camera? Boop.
All right. We'll give folks a little bit longer. So a very cool feature, if y'all have never gotten to see it before, there's a D&D Beyond overlay uh, for... So a very Twitch. cool feature, if y'all have never gotten to see it before, I just streamed myself in stereo. Uh, <laughs> you can put in a D&D Beyond overlay that will pop up everyone's character um, as you're playing. The more you know. That's That's really cool. I like that. <laughs> I need oh, to look into it. I can click on it. Yeah. Oh. And it'll actually nippy. pop up everyone's character. It shows you health in real time. Oh. Didn't realize I wasn't following you. What? <laughs> yeah, that, um, pop-up is almost nice enough for me to like to use the oh, beyond no. over the convenience of having everything in roll 20. I mean, roll 20 is very nice. The, the big advantage I find with, well, to be honest, I got a club kit through D and D beyond, uh, to play D and D with our church youth group, uh, which gave me full access to every single book. So wow. that definitely slanted me in that direction. Oh well, that works. That that totally makes it worth it. Yeah, having to rebuy everything on Roll Twenty, and then still not having physical copies would be a bad combo. <laughs> oh no, I just make my players enter everything. Yeah, helps them learn their character. It's like writing it on the old sheets. That's true. I still use sheets, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this spear is awesome. <laughs> Holy cow! I I'm, you know, I'm kind of happy that I'm not a metal bender because this this is really cool. Uh, is this a spear that you created, or is this one in the books? Uh, no, I rattled this off uh, while we were waiting for everyone to join and get started. <laughs> wow. Okay. May I borrow this spear for like? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I really like the effects and stuff, and yeah, it's it's cool. So, yeah, thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> I mean, what I find funny about my character, my character has the ring of power from the Lord of the Rings. So, <laughs> <laughs> wandering between worlds, you just accumulate strange things. But of course, here, far dimensionally far from uh, the world of Sauron, unfortunately, the effects don't actually work. Nah, it's just a gold circle on my chest. <laughs> um, so it's the same day because it's a short rest, correct? Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Do we have everybody back? Almost. Almost fear dropped her popcorn. <laughs> so this Discord event thing seems cool, but I don't actually know how to tell it that I'm participating in the event. Oh. Uh, oh, I don't think 
yeah, this one is not a joinable. Yeah, so I guess it just yeah. There's there's no like join that's just sharing what's happening. Huh. All right. Oh, maybe it's only showing if you're in one of those rooms. Yeah, I don't know. Anywho. All right, so short rest. So if you have any abilities that recharge on a short rest, uh, you can do those. Uh, also, you get back... Um, oh, we got to fix that. Got to get in the LTN Discord. Um so on a short rest, uh, Lavoy, you get your key back. And that's the key to combat. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And uh, Sil, I think, yep, has... Oh, you didn't cast any spells, so you're fine. All right. Uh, so to keep us moving relatively quickly, uh, let's have everyone roll an intimidation check. Ooh. That I can do. <laughs> Do I get an advantage? <laughs> 25. I'll say, across four of you, someone's going to do fine. <laughs> oh, geez, My but it's not... My plan of intimidation of offering treats did not work so well. <laughs> so I rolled a natural 20, and then my intimidation modifier is 5. So, nice. 25. 21. All right. Uh, so Shargon and Lavoy uh, don't manage to pull it off, uh, but Sill and uh, Eldarian uh, manage to sufficiently intimidate your captive. Um, so as you all take a short break and drink some water, eat some food, and sort of bandage up your wounds, uh, you are able to interrogate your captive. Um, and he gives you a bit of the rundown. Uh they are members of a sort of cult of Yuan Ti that live out in the desert. They came here from somewhere else uh, following an oracle uh, that basically says it connected them to something that is slumbering beneath the sands. Uh, their goal is to awaken whatever it is that is beneath the sands, at which point it will destroy all of the, the humanoid civilization here. And they believe... Uh, begin their reign over the flats. To that purpose, they have stolen the cattle to offer as sacrifices. Uh, they've created some kind of ritual altar space uh, on the other end of this canyon and are heading there now uh, and preparing to sacrifice the cattle. I look back to everyone. Um, and you see my eyes uh, shimmer with silver, and you see that my eyes cannot move. With that, I say, it's time that we continue. And I'm just going to um, pity um, off the, the snake guy. All right. Uh, yeah, it's no problem to say that you all uh, can either. So you all can basically just knock him out uh, and throw him behind a rock here and come retrieve him on your way back. Okay. So you'll have some uh, some culprits to hand over when you get back to town. Oh, OK, cool. <laughs> we'll say that you uh, you held your spear very dramatically like you were going to finish him and then you stab it into the ground. Uh, and it, the, the creature like, like shies away thinking you're going to kill it. Uh, and it's a very dramatic moment and no one knows that you actually meant to stab it and you missed. All right. That, so that's fair. <laughs> uh, I'm going to group y'all back together. And copy you so I can drop you onto our new map. All right, so you all follow along the canyon, um, and you can see that there are areas where the canyon sort of uh, 
it's this very deep ravine and there are places where it like pushed under uh underground for a while and through passages and so you're you're passing through some tunnels and caves until you finally emerge into uh what looks like a partially ruined uh structure that used to be here uh maybe even before the disaster that ruined the flats Uh, and as you get close, I'm going to have everyone make a perception check. Um, 22. Eight, 18. 18. <laughs> what are the odds of uh, all those 22s? All right. Uh, so as you all get closer, uh, you hear, you, you pick out two different sounds. Um, there is a sort of repetitive chorus of sibilant hissing and there's a rhythm to it. And it seems to be coming from more than one creature. Uh, it takes you a second and you realize it is Yuan T chanting in some language you don't understand. What you also hear is uh, very similar to the sounds you were hearing at the ranch, uh, but more distressed. Uh, you hear like, um, you gather that the cattle are up ahead, at least some of them, and they are very unhappy with something. Uh, I'm going to stealth my way oops, wrong. Uh, this direction. Um, yeah, up onto this cliff face. Yep, you can see that the ground ahead of you sort of descends. Um, and you should be able to kind of get a view from up there. Uh, I'll leave it up to you sort of how much you're getting up there. Um, so go ahead and does anyone else want to go sort of look down from there? Uh, I will yeah, probably. How tall is the cliff face? Uh, you can't actually tell from here how low it goes on the other side. You see it slanting downward. You'd guess at least 20 or 30 feet. Yikes. <laughs> uh, uh, thankfully, we're not um, anywhere near them yet. <laughs> that's that's nice. <laughs> so I can re-roll Ow. for... Oh, next. wait. Actually, I'm lucky. Oh, do we critically... Yeah. yeah, much better. Is this... Uh, so is anyone no, else... No, I'm a halfling. Yeah, he's he's a halfling. Uh, so who else is going to go up there? Anyone else? Uh, like I said, me. All I'll right, uh, me up. Give me stealth rolls for uh, stealthing for I Eldarian did. and Shil. So seven. They go. We both rolled ones to come up here. Ah, uh, yeah. All right, uh, so let's give them a perception check and see what's going to happen. Oops. I guess we're not going in this with a plan. We're just, we're just curious, curious people. Oh, okay. cool. Uh, so based on their <coughs> perception check, um that is one success and three failures uh you suddenly hear the chanting stop and you can now see that there was a 
uh, one of these snake people uh, up on the top of this ridge looking down, seemingly like coordinating the ritual. And uh, they have definitely spotted you, and everyone's going to need to roll for initiative. Oh, man. Um. Previous combat. All right, and what did Eldarian get? Oh, whoops, there I got it. Is. 18. All right. Uh, so. Something you all can't see yet is going to move. Actually, no, they won't move until they won't move yet. They're doing something else. Uh, Shargan, you are first. Uh, from where you're at, you just see a... And when I say humanoid figure, this figure looks almost entirely human. Uh, and you can see that they are surrounded by this pulsing swarm of spectral snakes. They're wearing what looks like some kind of priestly garb. Uh, and she turns and is pointing at you all. What are you going to do? Does it look like it sees me specifically? Actually, we're going to continue moving here. Did it look like it followed me at all? Was it still staring at the group? Uh, make an insight check. I can do that. Nope, can't tell. Yeah, it's hard to tell. It definitely is aware like of the party. Uh, you specifically, you, you're not sure. Um, did our wizard heal during the um, uh, short rest? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. She would have been able to spend uh, hit die. Okay. So we will... Well, while we're behind this rock thingy, we're going to turn into a bear. So we will bonus action to turn into a bear. All right. And uh, I dropped those into your extras tab as wild shapes. Shoe bear. I don't have an extra tab. Uh, uh, hit refresh. Nope, still only have the Oh, no, no. Sorry, hit refresh on your D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond, thank you. Let's see where the extra tab is. Right there, I see it. Thank you. So we'll scale you up because that's a large creature, right? Yep. I'm a little unnerved that um, I feel that there's now four feet on the ground instead of two. Uh, also, if you didn't see your extras, you probably didn't see your restoration blade. Uh, you have a special effect you can activate that's going to make the ground around you within 30 feet uh, difficult terrain for your enemies. And you can use that once per day. So you all see absolute craziness as uh, Shargan wild shapes. Um, it's like foliage and plants sort of swirl up out of the ground and, and conceal him for a moment and then continue to swell up in shape. And when they unfold, there is now a full size bear 
in his place. Uh, but the foliage and plants don't stop. Uh, they seem to be like cascading out from him in waves uh, that are tangling the ground around him. Uh, but Lavoy and Sill, you notice that they're not impeding you. Cool. Very nice. All right, so that's a bonus action. Uh, we might have lost Shargan. Are you with us? I'm back, yeah. Okay. And I, when I refreshed the page, it broke my camera for a second. Uh, so you are wild shaped. You've got your cool entangling aura. Uh, yep. So you've still got an action left. What do you want to do? Oh, I'm going to dodge. All right, you are dodging. All right, now the figure on the top of the hill is going to yell uh, some orders in that language. Uh, to the folks down below. And... Let's see. Yeah. Uh, it is going to point at Shargan, who is now a very visible uh, large bear covered in plants. Uh, bear. And these spectral snakes uh, sort of spiral down her arm and fly out towards you as a bolt. Uh, you're going to need to make an intelligent saving throw. I fail the intelligent saving throw. Uh, you all see the snakes like curl around Shargan's form and then several of them bite at the bear's head. Uh, so you are going to take 11 points of psychic damage. And uh, what is something that Shargan is afraid of? Hard sharks. Hard sharks? Uh, <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, we'll make it easy and probably fade like... Form into um, a shark. I was going to say, I'm going to take this hyper literally. Uh, what is after you is in fact uh, the ground in front of you suddenly bursts uh, and you see a fin uh, formed of folded cards one over the other and a creature bursts up out of the ground, and it is literally a giant card, or a giant shark made of razor sharp cards, and it is spilling poker chips like blood from beneath its teeth. And it oh, yeah, bites into like you, that. and this is what you believe causes this damage. Might have just cured his gambling addiction. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, it is Sill's turn. So, Sil, you do have your cantrips, but you've also got more powerful spells. Uh, you've got, you can create a giant web. You can shoot uh, larger fiery bolts called Scorching Rays. Uh, you've also got an AoE uh, cold attack. Um, I want to shoot my fiery bolt dagger again and aim for the closest um, uh, creature. Thing. All right. Uh, go ahead and make a spell attack roll. It's going to be a d20 plus 5. 20. Uh, natural 20 or with the plus 5? Natural 20. All right. You're going to do double damage. Roll 2d10. Have one d10, so roll her twice. Ten. Ten. All right, uh, your dagger flies out across and slams into this uh, snake shrouded figure. So she's gonna take a chunk of damage and she's gonna have to roll a concentration check. Uh, she passes. All right, uh, Lavoy, you are next. 
Uh, do I feel anyone moving toward us? Or did I feel anyone move toward us? Not yet, but you heard her yell something to someone. Mm -hmm. Um, and is rolling a check part of an action? Uh, you can go ahead and roll a perception check. Percep okay. Uh, yes, you can definitely tell there are creatures down below. Uh, you get the impression that some of them haven't acted yet, uh, but there are quite a few of them. Okay, cool. Um... Oh, I'm just out of range. Yeah. So either I move to defend our choke point or we get rid of this person. Um so I see that that the bear is feared or scared or panicking. Uh yes, you definitely see signs of of magically induced panic. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to... My connection went crazy all of a sudden. Okay. Uh, what did you say you were doing? Uh, I'm going to throw my spear with a charge to push the target. All right. <laughs> Ooh, all right. That is going to hit. Okay. Uh, so the push damage. And. Oh. Is that. No, that's not the throw damage. Correct? It's the 1d6 is the throw damage. Uh, yes. Okay. My apologies. There we go. So, seven total. <laughs> All Plus right, <laughs> fifteen feet backwards, off a cliff. So, uh, she is going to make a uh, dexterity saving throw to see if she can grab this ledge, or if she is just gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she gets a natural two. She is going over. <laughs> okay, so there goes my last charge, but it was well worth it. <laughs> Let's uh, double check our falling damage here. <laughs> that must break our concentration. I mean, it's definitely not great for her concentration, that's for sure. One d ten, or sorry, one d six for every ten feet. Uh, so go ahead and roll three d six damage. All right, uh, but you have damaged her twice, so she's gonna have to make two concentration checks, and it's already broken. Uh, as your spear crashes into her. Uh, the shock waves just stagger her back. Uh, the spell affecting Shargan breaks. Uh, and she goes <laughs> and falls backwards off the cliff. Uh, and she's going to be knocked prone. That's right. <laughs> Don't mess with my bear. All right. <laughs> That was a good turn. Uh, Eldarian, you are up. All right. So I'm going to attempt to get on a, to get in on the action. 
and I'm gonna stealth over there. Um, All right. Uh, so you can you're a rogue and you have cunning action, so you can use a bonus action to hide. So go ahead and give me a new stealth check. Uh, Nineteen plus three, so twenty. Two. 22 will do it and then you can move up to your normal distance uh, yep. wherever you want I'm gonna head over here and hide behind this rock alright you seem to be hidden Nino Benito alright uh, you all hear uh, frantic <laughs> hissing down below and uh, something you can't see happens. Dun, dun, dun. Actually, lots of things you can't see happens. Um, Rolling, rolling, rolling. Oops. There we go. And the big one. Okay, uh, we are back to Shargon. Um, let's double check. So Shargon, what would you like to do? You just saw your target get blasted off of the, the top there. We're going to make it to about here. Because I'm assuming some of this is difficult terrain. All right. Yeah. As you move forward, uh, the terrain under you bursts into life. Uh, it's a lot of like little cactuses with pink flowers. Uh, but there's also some grasses and some thorned vines weaving up out of there. Yeah. So I'm assuming I can't actually see down below and they can't see up yet. Uh, well, they definitely know something's happening. Yeah. Uh, if you actually step out to the edge, you can see them and they can see you. Yeah, I only had 80 and that's 75, so I figured that's probably fair. Oh. Yeah, so you're kind of seeing across the top. I would say that you could probably see towards the back, and you definitely see some of the cattle. Uh, they appear to be uh, they appear to be tied to posts in the back. Okay, that's going to be my turn then. Uh, actually, where you're at, I'll say you also see there is a giant uh, glowing magical circle uh, in the middle of the ruin down there. Good to know. Is this one right here still tied or does it look like they're trying to untie it and drag it towards the circle? Uh, the two closest to the circle have been untied from the posts and are being dragged by two more snake people. Got it. Okay. Okay. All right, so that was a dash action. Uh, the creature down here is going to stand up. She's very unhappy that she just got blasted off the cliff. Uh, she's going to sort of back up and get up on top of one of these fallen pillars. And she is going to cast... Eldritch Blast, uh, targeting Shargon, who is just barely peeking over the top there. That's a 13 and a 12. Both hit. All right. Ooh, that is 16 points of force damage. 
Dylan Bear form. All right, uh, and that is her turn. Uh, Sill, you are up. Um, I think I'm gonna move to just behind this little rock here, and just gonna camp out there. All right. Uh, it is Lavoy's turn. Uh, so Lavoy, as far as acrobatics, I would say that you could roll an acrobatics check, and for every whew, every five above ten, I'd let you knock off uh, ten feet of falling. Um, oh, you don't have slow fall yet. Do you? No, but I do have step of wind, which doubles my jump distance. Yeah. You'd still have to deal with sort of the fallenness yeah. of it. With the falling bit, okay. So you, you'll make an acrobatics check, and depending on how well you do, we'll knock some dice off. Um, so, in relativity, how how far is this to that? I'm just going to go flat distances, because if we have to start getting into the trigonometry of it... Trigonometry? It. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so it's it's not technically lower than, than this point, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's not worth doing the math. Okay, so I could technically jump to that point successfully? Uh, well, you can roll for it. I can roll for it? Okay, so that's still above, like, just a natural, like dash and a jump okay yeah because you're you're ultimately falling 30 feet so we're not going to charge you for the movement but you are going to have to okay. deal with the effects of the falling gotcha okay oh <laughs> sure why not i'm spending a key point <laughs> to do a dash with my spear ready um yeah, I can I can do a plunge with this, correct? Yep. Okay, cool. All right. Please. No. <laughs> no. Uh So I'll give you a compromise here. Uh you are going to take every bit of this falling damage. But this also means that you are falling very fast and very hard. So, uh Go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, yeah. Uh, do so I have to roll to hit first? Or just well, no, I'm, I'm rolling the damage you're going to take. So oh, okay, yeah, you're yeah. going to take seven bludgeoning damage from the fall. That's uh, not bad. But we are going to knock her prone. You're going to be knocked prone. <coughs> uh, and go ahead and roll for this first attack. And if you hit will add your falling damage to the damage she takes. That's a hit. So she's going to take 13 points of damage. Uh, so That didn't go as planned. So at a distance... Ironically, that was exactly my plan. <laughs> at a distance, this looks really cool. It looks like you, like took your spear, you ran off to the edge of the cliff, and you just jumped and ah, and stabbed her, uh, knocking both of you to the ground. If someone was okay. closer by, they might realize that your your fall was not as controlled as you meant it to be uh, <laughs> and didn't quite, didn't quite work out. All right. Uh, that brings us... Oh, that was only your... Uh, Oh no, Step of the Wind is a bonus action, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. All right. How do I uh, remove my circles? <laughs> Sorry, I'm making circles all over your map and I apologize. No worries. <laughs> Got him. All right. Okay. Uh, let me double check. One thing. Key field attack. Okay. So that does not apply. Yes, it does not. I did not. All right, uh, that brings us to uh, Eldarian. So Eldarian, you're hearing the sounds of sort of 
combat happening in the distance. What do you want to do? Um, I'm looking at the map, and there's a far easier way to get into the battle, but it's super dangerous because there's a giant uh, skeleton sandworm over there. Yes. So I'm going to try and stealth my way over there. All right. So you're already uh, hidden, so you don't have to rehide. Oh. Uh, and as a rogue, you can dash with a bonus action. Got an eight. Eleven. Uh, what are you rolling? Uh, he was doing a stealth check. Oh, but it we'll, was we'll keep your stealth. we'll keep your stealth from last time because you already you already used an action to hide. Mm-hmm. It was a much better roll last time, so that'll yeah. that'll be good for you. Yep. Uh, so I'm gonna stealth my way over there and hide in this little crevice right there. All right. Uh, if you wanted to, you would still be able to pop out and make a sneak attack against something down there. Um, I'm not gonna do that until I'm a little bit closer. All right. In that case, it is these two snake people. Um, they are not pleased that Lavoy just jumped into that. Uh, Probably not, but I have a plus two to my AC. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're going to make an opposed strength check with the cattle to see how well they can drag them. Oh, good. I wanted them. I wanted to like block their way. Uh, it's it's brutal, but the first one does manage to drag uh, the cattle his full movement. Uh, the next one's going to roll. Babe. Uh, the second one does not have as much luck. Uh, he drags the, the cattle 15 feet, but the cattle is, is actively fighting back. Wow! <laughs> Thud, thud, thud. <laughs> All right. Uh, it is the Litlands' turn. Uh, and they have a target now. Six. Uh, the small snakes hiss and make their way towards Lavoy. <clears throat> Figures. We are back up to the top. Uh, so this big boy here is actually a swarm of skeletal snakes. I didn't have a skeletal snake swarm picture. Uh, and it is... It is also going to make its way towards Lavoy. Uh, so... You get the impression that this creature would hiss if it could, but it can't. And so instead it makes this almost more horrifying sound of like bones rattling off one another as all of these like spinal skeletons of snakes almost like roll in a, in a sphere uh, or a cloud across this space. Uh, Shargan, you are up, and I'm real curious to see what you're about to do. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing all these lines. So, he made it difficult terrain from his point, correct? Yes. Oh, okay, just up to that point. Whew, all right, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a big acrobatics check. <laughs> We're just gun ho. We're just we're in it to win it. <laughs> go big or go home. Drop bear. <sighs> Drop bear. Release the kraken. This fall is bearable. All right. Uh, so you're gonna knock twenty feet off of your uh, your fall there. So you're only gonna take one d six. So you take five bludgeoning damage, but you don't fall prone. Well, the bear is more skilled than I am. 
it is funny when the giant bear outdoes the monk. Yeah. Shargon, are you muted? Yes, I was. Thank you. All right. Um, we were going to, I was trying to jump on top of the pillar. Oh, um, uh, and then we'll, yeah, I'll give you that. So yeah, actually then you, we'll, you won't take the five. Okay. But we're going to drop bear form anyway. So that doesn't matter as a bonus action. If you drop the bear form, you'll lose your uh, aura there. It's my baby. Yeah, I know, but I was going to lose it as soon as I get hit anyway. All right. In this way, I can cast a spell on my turn. In that case, I'll drop it off. Thank you. And I go back to a normal-sized person for a little bit. Hi. And we are going to cast Entangle again. Very nice. Very okay. nice. We're going to do it right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> Bear puns. Right there. <laughs> We're still in D and D, Bob. You know, I usually call my bear druids paw. Noise. <laughs> Noise. All right. Uh, so the uh, the guard and the cattle will both make strength saving throws. Nice. Uh, the uh, cattle is going to make it. The guard is going to fail. Yeah. So guard is restrained. Oh, nice. Excellent use of entangle. Oh, so let me go in here and cast it. So oh. parts of this ruined masonry uh, busts apart as uh, desert flowers and vines and cacti burst up. That was because I cast that before and didn't click click the right button. I didn't actually click cast healing word right then. Ah. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, so that was your action. Uh, anything with your bonus action? The bonus action was coming out of bear form. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, in that case, it is the uh, the priestly figure. She is very unhappy. Uh, getting knocked off the cliff and then getting stabbed. Um, you know, happy. So, let's see what that. All right. uh, so she pulls out a scimitar, but her scimitar is distinctly fancier. Uh, it almost looks like it's made out of obsidian. And there are green veins running through it. Uh, and as she weaves it through the air, uh, it's releasing this, like, greenish cloud. And she is uh, going to slash you with it. That fart. More gas. That is a 24 to hit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Nine points of slashing. And 15 points of necrotic. I'm down. Uh, and then, since you are down, uh, she is going to use her movement uh, to come over to Shargon, and she is going to try and constrict you. Alrighty. That's not fair. Uh, 17 to hit. 17 barely hits. And 7 points of bludgeoning damage, and you are now grappled. Oh, you're grappled and restrained. Right. And go ahead and roll concentration on... Uh, fail. Entangle drops. Oof, duh. We're doing so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is her turn. Uh, Sill, you are up. It's looking, it's looking a little bad down there. Um, can I make my way over the cliff? <laughs> uh, so you've got thirty feet of movement, or sixty if you dash. Uh, thirty is going to get you up to about those cactuses up there. Uh, I'll but, run. All right. <laughs> So that'll get you, yeah, that'll get you all the way to the edge. 
And you'll actually have a perfect vantage point to fire spells down at people. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my flaming dagger again. All right. Against two. 17. All right, that'll hit. Who are you targeting? Um. There's two guards, the priestess, two small snakes, and a big swarm of snakes. I'll target the swarm of sta- snakes. All right, uh, so that will hit. So your damage is going to be 1d10. Nine. Nice. All right. Uh, Lavoy, it is your turn. So um, that is a death saving throw, right? Yeah, it is. Oh, thank goodness. That is a successful save. Uh, Eldarian, you are up. Um, so she attacked the, the priestess? So let me... She attacked the swarm of undead snakes. Oh, okay. Okay, never mind then. So let's see. Um, so I hummed myself a jaunty little tune. Uh, I'm gonna make a stealth check. Natural twenty plus so twenty three. <laughs> yep, that will do it. <laughs> um, then I'm going to come on over there, hide in there. Um, and I noticed that the sandworm is in the range of my bow. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to shoot it. All and, right. And your stealth, so roll with advantage. Yep. Seventeen. Seventeen is definitely gonna hit. Yep. Uh, seven for damage. Plus sneak, correct? Yep. You yeah. also get sneak because you have advantage. So two d six. Another six damage. Add that, so that's thirteen. All right. Uh, so your arrow pierces through and this magic infused into it uh, just bursts through like eight snakes. It is very damaged. All right. Uh, The guards are no longer restrained. Okay. We're in trouble. Uh, So the first guard is going to... Whoops. First guard is going to make strength versus the cattle. Ooh, uh, the cattle is still fighting hard. It manages to stop him, so he only gets 15 feet. And the second one... Ooh, the second one, uh, they're both sort of flailing, but it manages to pull the cattle 30 feet. All right. It's now time for the little snacks. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, so uh, Eldarian uh, as you finish your shot uh, you suddenly feel something clamp onto your ankle oh boy uh, you need to make a constitution saving throw jeez <laughs> of course I've been my strong constitution uh, three uh, you take one point of piercing damage and Ooh. six points of poison damage uh, as a small snake reveals itself uh, from underneath the sand and bites you. Jeez. Um, 
how much damage was that again? Uh, that was seven. Um, okay. All right. All right. The other two snakes are going to keep moving. They are both going to make attacks on Shargon. <laughs> First one gets a nine. Uh, next one gets a 16. 16 hits. All right. One point of piercing and five points of poison. These things hurt. <laughs> round down resistance, right? We round up. Round down. Round down. All right. That was all of them. We're back to the top. Uh, the big swarm is very hurt. It's going to try and make its way uh, towards Eldarian. Oh, man. Uh, Shargon, it is your turn. I can still see Lavoy, right? Yes. Hey, Lavoy, have some pollen. Yay! <laughs> G- give us a good sneeze. Which one? Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> and you're awake. Heal for nine. My body hurts. Level two healing spirit. Or healing word, sorry. Woohoo. I am not dead. Uh, All right. Uh, so you and, do have oh, your I action do have left. Attack. I have, what is it? It's disadvantage. Attack. Creature attack rolls have disadvantage. But we're still going to try to make an attack roll I'll, against. Well, I'll tell you something else. I don't know if you want to keep your casting ability, but you could wild shape as an action. You can't with a um, bear, with a um, circle of the land. I, I think that it's you have the option to do it as a bonus action, but you should still be able to do it as a regular action too. Okay, I'll do it then. Yeah, um, you can how, use it as a bonus action, but okay. you don't have to. I wonder how she would respond to me becoming a bear. Although, actually, you're coming over here. We're going to transform into a wolf. I think. Let me check that. All right. You have my extras. Yeah, we're going to turn into a dire wolf. Three attacks, baby. I have a great wolf if I can find him. I only get one attack, but... It's a it's good a attack to get. It's a good attack, and I have more AC and more hit points. <laughs> oh, that's similar to the one I use. I love it. Uh, one of my games, uh, everyone plays Living Muppets. <laughs> I use Moon Moon for mine when I make people play Druids. People play Druids. Alright, so that is your action. Yep. Alright, uh, that brings us to the caster. Uh, she is not happy with how this is advancing. Um... What is she going to do? Uh, she is... Ooh, 
Yeah. Uh, she is going to upcast hold person. So Lavoy and uh, Shargan are going to need to make wisdom saving throws. Oh, good. Hopefully. Hopefully good. Please be good. Nope, it's not good. I probably am just under. She's targeting me? Yes. I don't need to make a saving throw as I am not a humanoid right now. Oh, good point. Whew. In her panic, she targets the wolf. All right. Uh, and yes, you are correct. Uh, Lavoy, you are one under. You yeah, are I knew paralyzed. it. <laughs> I'm paralyzed. Okay. I'm just going to give you a purple dot. I have so many weird tokens that don't connect to anything. Oh, and she's going to stand up from prone. Obviously. Uh, Alright. Uh, Syl, you are up. Um, can I make my way down to this little cliff area, like, right here? I kind of, like, make a nudging motion yeah, for the big boss there. of, like, blast it. I'm going to stand right here so I'm not, so I don't Possibly fall that easily. And I'll um, use my flaming dagger again and aim for the skeletons. Things. All right. Uh, if you want to pick it up a notch, you do have Scorching Ray, which is actually going to fire three flaming bolts. Let's do that. All right. So roll d20 plus five three times. <laughs> 44 oh can you, can you give them to me individually <laughs> so I got 20, 14, 5 and the plus 5 so that's two hits uh, so we can go ahead and do these in order. So let's roll. Go ahead and roll two d six damage for the first one. So what was the total? So ten. All right, and go ahead and roll two d six more. Several things in mind that you want. Ten. All right. Uh, so your uh, your dagger, as you throw it, it bursts into flame, and then as it falls down into the canyon, it splits. Uh, it like bursts apart into flaming fragments, and the fragments hit this creature and explode, and you finish off the swarm of undead snakes. All right, uh, Lavoy. You're you're having a bad day. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm having a very. Uh, I didn't see this coming. Uh, you at the end of your turn, you can make a wisdom saving throw to break free. Okay. Um. Then I will. Can I patient defense? Uh, you can't take any actions uh, until you have broken the paralysis. Okay, so I can't even like key. Okay, key actions. Okay, then I guess I will try to break. Nope. <laughs> oh, <laughs> on my screen, it was at a twenty, and then it hit the edge of my screen and fell over to a two. So that's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully, uh, Shargon will get a good hit and break her concentration. Uh, Eldarian, you are up. There is a snake on your boot. <laughs> um, he wasn't even born when that movie came out. Mm. Toy Story? Dang it. Yep. I, I'm old. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to make an athletics check to try and stomp it off. All right, go for it. Five. 
that does not do it. It is still uh, oh. still right on you, but you can still make an attack against it if you want. Uh, I'm going to try and stab it with my short sword. All right, go for it. Six. Six total? No, three plus three. That is not going to hit. You still got that snake on your boot. Yep. No stab, stab, stab. All right. Uh, oh, here's here's where it gets gets sad. Whoops. No, dang it. I was trying to protect them. <laughs> Uh, so the guard drags the cattle out onto the sigil and the sigil glows and the chanting and hissing gets louder and the cattle lets out one last and then it just disappears did the guard disappear too or just the guard did not disappear so the other one is going to keep dragging it can't get the full distance by default so it's going to pull you got a 20 to pull yeah well, we only lost the third so all we have to do is bring back four alive we only lost two. Alright. didn't get the bonus. So one snake is <laughs> uh, perhaps dazed from your boot hitting its face. Uh, the snake on your boot does not manage to hit you. Uh, but its buddy is going to come over and attack you with advantage. That is going to hit. <laughs> that is three points of damage. And two more snakes are going to attack uh, Shargon, the wolf. That's an eight. And a 24. 24 does hit. That is one point of piercing and six points of poison. Do I still get my um, halfling resistance? I don't think so. Probably not to the wolf, right? Yeah. So what is it, six points of pure, uh, poison? Yeah. Uh, but then it is Shargon's turn. Well, we're going to attack the one trying to concentrate on this All right, go for it. Plus six, so fifteen. That is definitely going to hit. Okay, so. so. Uh, 2d6 plus 4 damage. Yep, 2d6 plus 4. Are you doing all three attacks or just. No, I only get one as a wolf. Oh. So that's 11 damage. All right. And she has to make a strength, strength saving, saving throw. throw. She's going to. Uh, what's the DC? 13. Uh, she gets a 15. But now let's roll for her concentration check. 19. Dang it. <laughs> She's rolling pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, and it is her turn. Um, so I she's can't. concentrating on hold person. Uh, she takes a deep breath. <sighs> and it's going to spray poison across to you. So make a constitution saving throw.
What? Oh, me oh or... sorry, uh, Shargan. Yeah, I was looking for the con. Nine did not make it. It's going to be 12 points of poison damage. Still wolfy. All right. Still. Uh, Sil, it is your turn. So there are two, um, two small snakes over there. Uh, there's yeah. two attacking Shargan, and there are still the two guards and the caster. Um, I'm actually going to try and help out Eldarian. And I'll get the one. I'll use just one flaming dagger and sh- try to shoot the one in front of him. All right. D20 plus five. Oh, actually, uh, I'll tell you something else you can use. You have an ability called Magic Missile. Uh, you can fire three, uh, three attacks that hit automatically. They only do 1d4 plus 1, but you know these snakes are not very strong. This would guarantee you'd kill three different little snakes. Let's do that. All right. So you uh, you take your dagger, uh, and you're holding it in your hand, and you sort of flick your wrist, and suddenly you're holding three daggers, and you throw them into the air, and they unerringly seek out and just pop each of these three little snakes. When Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right, that Go knocks up. out three of them. There's only one tiny snake remaining. All right. Uh, Lavoy. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Lavoy, make a wisdom saving throw. See if you end the paralysis at the end of your turn. No. <laughs> oh man, you are just uh, you're just hot and cold. It's all or nothing. <laughs> all right, uh, Eldarian, you are are tiny snake free, uh, and there are no more enemies in your line of sight. Don't take me out, Coach. <laughs> Still in it. Uh, if you were to target the caster. Uh, she would have you get sneak attack because she's engaged with Sharkin. Oh, whoops. Uh, I didn't hear you. What did you say? Uh, I move and tie my rope around the cattle. All right. Well, so alternative, instead of adding another rope, you could cut the rope that's already there. And this would let it run away from the guard if it comes for it. Then I will do that. All right. You, you get this thing unhitched, and it immediately... And it kind of nuzzles against you a little. And it's going to start moving away from all of this. All right. All right. That brings us to the two guards. They're going to go try and get some more cattle. But even dashing, they can only get to about here. All right. Tiny Snake is going to attack Shargan. Bring a tiny snake. It gets a 12. It misses. All right. Back to the top. That thing's dead. Shargan, it's your turn. We're going to once again attempt to attack the caster. All right. Go for it. This caster's getting on my nerves. Oh, yeah. Nice. So that's going to be, what, 46? <laughs> 46 plus 4, yeah. 
Jeez. So 19 damage. She is very hurt. And she needs to make a strength saving throw, go prone. Uh, let's see. Jeez. She makes the strength saving throw and her con check. But she still took 19, which are the good. Yes, she is quite hurt. Uh, it is her turn. Um, she is very upset. Um, I'm going to need... Ooh. Yeah, she is just unhappy. So the good news, Lavoy, is that you're no longer uh, paralyzed. Let's go. The bad news is uh, she is going to create But if you just start off with stability, first a little bit, you have to basically ride the rope for 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, EJ, I do this. She's going to use her last breath. And she lets out some horrible shriek, and you see a purple black sphere begin to emerge from her torso until it swallows this entire area in darkness. The good news is she's dead. The bad news is uh, that each of you are going to take 2d6 cold damage. Oh, dang it. I was like, darkness? I can deal with darkness. This is absolute pitch blackness. Uh, each of you takes five cold damage. Uh, the small snake dies. Um, yeah, I can deal with pitch blackness. All right. And it's cold, okay? Uh, Sil, it is your turn. Um... I'm going to join everybody else down on the battlefield, I guess. Because, yeah. Why not? Um, you can attack uh, the two um, one, the two guys that are going after the turtles from where you're at. Actually, um, let's use um, the missile thing and attack those two things. All right. Uh, so you've got three bolts. Uh, do you want to hit one? Do you want to hit both of them or all three at one? Um, hmm. Let's hit them both. And the third bullet just hit the one that has the most HP, I guess. All right. Uh, so roll 2d4 plus 2. D4 plus 2? Yep. Okay, twice? Uh, just roll that once. Okay. Five. All right, the first one gets hit with two bolts and takes five damage. Now roll 1d4 plus one. Four plus one, five. And the other one takes five damage. There you go. Uh, so they're both trying to go for more cattle, uh, and you hit them and they... <coughs> All right, uh, Lavoy, uh, at the start of your turn, you're going to take another 2d6 cold damage. What? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can't reflex or anything like that. Uh, nope. 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 Uh, okay. How big is this sphere, and where is it, and is it maintaining? Yeah, it, yeah. Uh, it's a 20-foot radius sphere. It is persisting, and it's encompassing both of you. It seems to be radiating to be out radiating from out her, from her uh, corpse. Uh, corpse. Okay. 
Whew, that is 10 points of cold damage. I'm out. Um, golly. All right. Uh, Eldarian, it is your turn. Is it a 20-foot radius, you said? Yes. So are it's you... blocking the entrance to the portal, right? Uh, are you not seeing a purple area? No, no. we're not. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, okay. hey. I was wondering why you all didn't that's respond purple. when I dropped that. <laughs> that's, that's 20 feet. Yep. Awesome. I'm, uh, I'm down again. All right, uh, Eldarian, what do you want to do? There are two snake guards left and four cattle, one of which you've released. Whoops, I keep doing that. I turn you down to cut down background noise. What would you like to do? I'm going to attempt to cut off the rope from one of the cattle using my bow. Ooh, all right. Uh, we're going to call this an attack with no. disadvantage. No, no. Yeah. So it's a low AC, but you're you're trying to hit a sort of small target. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I have a fry? 20. With disadvantage? Uh-huh. All right, yeah. Uh, you managed to snag another That's rope. Smart. Gonna hit the one square in the middle, then. All right. I'll switch my dot over. <laughs> That's all I need for a couple of fries. I just want to All right. Uh, it is the guard's turns. So this one is gonna grab and then start dragging. <clears throat> This one gets to here, uh, and the cattle is going to try and stomp it in the face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep, uh, the cattle is going to hit. We're going to give it dire wolf stats. So it's going to deal 10 points of damage. And it's going to make a strength saving throw. It does pass. Uh, so the guard doesn't realize that this cattle is now free. And uh, when it goes to try and grab it, the cattle goes, Row! and just double smacks it with its front paws, uh, smashing into it. And it is Shargon's turn. Uh, so you're going to take 2d6 more at the start of your turn. All right. I am sure you're aware, uh, but you know that Lavoy was in bad shape. Uh, yep. And this doesn't seem to be dispersing on its own. How much damage do I take? Uh, you took uh, five points of cold damage. Five. So I'm going to use my really good sense of smell. And try to find where um, Lavoy is. Yeah, Can I no do problem. That? You know where he was, and you've got really acute senses. So, and I'm going to drag him outside of the area. All right. Uh, this is a very disturbing space. There's a lot of like hissing sounds that you can't see, and it feels like things are like moving against your legs. Uh, but you are able to uh, grab Lavoy and and drag him out. Yeah. All right. Probably my action to do that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. She dead. Uh, Sil, you're up. Oh. Thanks, buddy. I'm going to attack the two things again. All right. You do still have one scorching ray left if you want to use that. You'll have to roll to hit, but it'll do more damage overall. Okay. Or if you wanted to get fancy, you can shoot a web and try and lock them in place. That might help. 
Let's do right. that. That's going to create a 20 foot cube. Is that a cube or is that a sphere? Fills a 20 foot cube. All right. So it's going to hit one now, but it's going to make difficult terrain for the other. So Got it. it's going to make a deck saves. It doesn't make it. So this one is restrained. This one is restrained. And conveniently, I have a web logo. All right, that is your action. Uh, Lavoie, death saving throw. Yeah. Okay, all right. That's a success. Uh, Eldarian, you are up. Um, so... I'm going to do precisely what I did last turn and attempt to shoot off another one of the uh, ropes. All right. Uh, make an attack with disadvantage. Uh, 11. 11 will just barely do it. You managed to... Are you doing the one on the left or the right? Uh, the one on the left. All right. You get it free. And again, both of the guards, uh, the first guard is going to try and break out of web. Never. <laughs> so it's going to have to make a strength check against your spell saving throw. It only gets a 10. It is not going to make it. And uh, the cattle is going to try and kick it in the head. And it crits. Yeah. It crits. Oh, man. Good turtle. That's a good oh, boy. Oh, turtle. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the cattle goes... Rawr, and it hits this thing so hard. It, it can't get out of the way. It just fully, like, body slams. And you see this snake person just disappear <gasps> under the cattle. And it does not move turtle anymore. Win. That turtle that is turtle. totally enough for the turtle club. <laughs> the uh, other turtle, turtle is, is free. Uh, it is also going to hit. Uh, 13 points of damage. Uh, and it is not knocked prone. All right. Uh, so the guard is now going to make an opposed athletics check to try and move the turtle. It does not succeed. It doesn't have a rope, so it, it makes no progress. All right, Shargan, you are up. Well, we've got a downed party member, so we will unwolfy. All right. We'll unwolfy, and then we will... Try to kill him. Uh, since I'm in May, that is not my character sheet. This is my character sheet. Um, um, we will cast. Um, we're going to on top of him. We're going to cast Healing Spirit. All right. So there's a healing spirit sitting on top of you. And I have a great have healing a spirit, spirit token. Spirit. Oh. Okay. Mm. Wow. So what does that do? You can you just kind of like heal a little bit every turn for a little bit. Oh, okay. Nice. All right. Uh, that's actually a. Oh, but you had to change back too. Yeah. All right. So that uh, is. I'll take a free action. <coughs> that's twice today. <laughs> uh, Sil, you are up. Um, I'm gonna just use my normal flaming dagger and attack the snake thing. All right. D twenty plus five. Twenty five. 
That oh, that's a natural twenty. Uh, so roll two uh, two d ten. Five and eight. All right, it is very hurt. Whoops. And that makes it Lavoy's turn. Huh. Mad. Yep, so you healed that five damage at the start of your turn, so you were awake. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, so I'm prone at so the I'm moment? Prone at the moment. Yeah, it heals you at the start of your turn. Okay, so I heal five more, or that was... No, five. that was just the, when you started. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so if I do Step of Wind, it says I can make a dash as a bonus action. Yes. Okay, so I can use my move action to get up. Yep. It's, uh, it's only half your movement, so that'll give you yeah. plenty to get there. Oh, okay, so I can use the dash and use half of it to get out of prone and half of it to move? Uh, yeah, that w- you'd have plenty. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that's that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go over to this guy. Um, so, there's that. Um, and then I'm just going to Furia Blows this sucker. So... So. Not that I can see. Oh. Uh, so how many hit? Sorry. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for the first one. The first one. Yep. Okay. Uh, that is enough. How do you want to finish it? Um, how do I want to finish it? Uh, I take my spear, I fling it up, and I'm twirling it, and I come right down through the base of his neck into the ground. All right. The, the last sort of residual charges in your spear, all the remaining metal burns off at once, and you all see like a shock wave that kicks up dust and uh, the dust here is not just dust. There are particles of capital D dust in it. Uh, And so this tiny shockwave becomes a huge shockwave and the cattle kind of and, and sort of shy back. Uh, But you have defeated the cattle wrestlers. So we'll, we'll sort of fast forward to get y'all out of here. Um, Oh, I wanted to investigate the ritual. I was going to say, you, you briefly investigate the ritual. Uh, it looks like what's here uh, is actually a teleportation, actually a teleportation. circle. Um, I, can I go in it? <laughs> well, so looking at it, you can't figure out much except the direction of the teleportation is down like hundreds and hundreds of feet into the ground. You don't even know that there's necessarily a place down there. Um, these, these snake cultists were not healthy, mentally healthy people. Uh, it's possible that they don't even know what they're sending this to, or if it's getting there. Um, it seems very inadvisable to try and go in this circle. Uh, you also don't know what the chant was they were using to activate it. Dang it. Only um, a new snake. <laughs> So we'll say that you all sort of note down, you sort of note the configuration um, and bring the surviving cattle uh, back to Vertinuckle. Uh, it takes you about half a day sort of trudging through the desert. Uh, it's much nicer now, though. The cattle love to be ridden. Like, you, you've learned a little bit about them. It actually, like... They, they absorb just a little bit of, like, life energy that you exude out of you. So it doesn't actually take it from you. It just pulls it from the air. Uh, and they seem to heal up. They're happier. Um, 
and you all arrive back. Uh, Vernon Knuckle runs out. He he hugs them like they're lost children. Aww. Oh, Fluffy! I didn't think you would make it. <laughs> I named my Fluffy. It's the same one. Wow. It just, just had exudes touch Fluffy. Touch. Wow. Well, it is noticeably fluffier than the others. Nice. Um, I like tactile pe- creatures. <laughs> so he, he brings them back and puts them in a special hatchling area. You can see that some arcanists are there repairing the barrier uh, and sort of reinforcing it. Um, and you all get your payout. Uh, he marks down your sort of uh, chit for the Rosen Investigator Service. Uh, each of you is going to get paid uh, 1,200 gold. And, uh, yep, and he directs you to... Uh, oops, good delay. Uh, directs you to Hereford Gumley, who is the town blacksmith, who is a flaming genasi. Uh, and he will take your request to make a magical item for you. So here we're going to wrap up our uh, adventure in the Tarascon Flats. Uh, and I think we'll leave you all at the Roundhouse. Uh, Missy, the uh, opalescent, glowing, uh, smiling ASMR bartender, uh, brings you all uh, a round of drinks, a round of food, uh, and you all are able to sort of enjoy your evening together. And who knows what tomorrow might bring. Yeah. Wow. So, thank you all for adventuring with us. Uh, just like <laughs> uh, just like Eldarian here, I also have a game starting at 2, because I'm crazy and scheduled 8 hours of D&D today. So... <laughs> Uh, I will sign off here, but I hope we get to play again sometime. And, uh, As do I. Enjoy the rest of your D and D day. Thanks, Colby. Always a blast. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. All right. Whoops. <laughs> nope. Camera's not connected. All right. Peace. Bye. Goodbye. Well, that was the end of game number one, uh, but I'm going to be back in 18 minutes uh, joining uh, another group to play through Into the Ruins, a level 11 adventure. Uh, You'll get to meet my otter homeboy, Omi, and uh, hey, there's my DM. And uh, so I'll be back with that here in about uh, 15 minutes.